Good morning, East Coast Church. It's good to see you guys today. Thanks for coming to church on December 1st. As we now head in after Thanksgiving into the officially the Christmas season has kicked off. Now we've honored Thanksgiving. I pray you had a great Thanksgiving with your family, your friends, and uh, those loved ones of yours. And uh, right now we're in Colorado. We went to see, I've got my second son lives in uh, Johnstown, Colorado, about five miles from Loveland with his wife, Abby. And my youngest son, Joe, lives in Denver. So we're, and then my daughter, Christine, and her family, our uh, three Oki grandsons are going to be coming. Uh, they're here. And uh, and so we're, we've celebrated Thanksgiving together. And uh, it's been nice as a family to do that. The only one that wasn't with us was my oldest son, Josh, and his family were celebrating with their uh, other side of their family. So, again, I pray you had a great Thanksgiving. And... Uh, Looking forward to seeing you all again in person next week. Me and Pastor Kim will be back next week in person. And uh, so I'm excited about today's message and, and visiting with you and, give, and giving you what uh, I believe God has for, for us for now, for this Sunday here at the East Coast Church. So let's get right to the message. And the title of the message today is Advent. What is it? You know, some interesting questions come up and you start talking, particularly in the Spirit-filled churches about Advent. You know, what is it? Do we as Christians in a spiritual church celebrate it? Should we celebrate it? Uh, why is it important to us as Christians? Uh, how do we speak to unbelievers about Advent? Is Advent relevant today? And how should Advent be recognized in a church? How should we recognize it? So let's get into it here for a few minutes. Let's look at the definition of Advent. A couple of them here. Uh, one is Advent really is a Christian season of preparation and waiting that leads up to Christmas. A season of preparation and waiting that leads up to Christmas. The meaning of the word Advent comes from the Latin word adventar, which means to come to. To come to. It's time to prepare for the celebration of the birth of Jesus at Christmas and also the second coming of Christ. Uh, People ask, well, when does it begin? When does Advent officially begin? It always begins the fourth Sunday before Christmas. The fourth Sunday before Christmas, which is often called Advent Sunday, which would be December 1st this year. In Western churches, Advent usually starts on the Sunday closest to November 30th, which is St. Andrew's Day. And like I said before, that this year would be on Sunday, December 1st, today. So today would be considered Advent Sunday. Webster's definition of Advent is the period beginning four Sundays before Christmas, observed by some Christians as a season of prayer and fasting. Some people teach, some churches teach that this is the time we're going to pray and fast. Uh, they also, Webster says it's the coming of Christ at the Incarnation, and also he may recognizes it's also talking about the second coming of Christ, which I think is very interesting. So let's look at something here for a moment. What people do for Advent? What do they do for Advent? It's celebrated in many different ways in different homes across the world and here in our country. And let's look at a few of these. Some people complete what's called an Advent calendar. We'll talk about that in more detail in a few minutes. Others light an Advent wreath. And we'll talk about, a bit, about that a little bit later. Uh, some people have pray, are praying through a devotional book that they have, particularly paying attention to it during the season of Advent. Some people write a Christmas tree. Hang, uh, you see the hanging of the green sometimes in some families. Uh, once you you know set up a Christmas tree, then people decorate their Christmas tree and light it. You know, put lights on it. Uh, also, they give gifts during this season at times. Families uh, seem to have more social gatherings today. You see more parties. Most of those parties aren't celebrating Advent, but you see a lot of Christmas parties. Uh, companies, corporations that they have for their uh, employees. And then also Advent is a lot of people make it a point to donate to people less fortunate than themselves. Uh, I knew a family in a church uh, back in Tulsa that uh, they were very well off financially. And their children were young. They had, I believe, four children. Yeah, four children. And those children were young, meaning they were three and four on their first two, and they got you know older and more came along. Uh, they took their kids actually every Christmas morning to the worst part of Tulsa, 
and handed out gifts to families and kids. And they were teaching their children that, that this season of Advent and Christmas is all about giving and giving to people who are less fortunate than them, which I thought was remarkable. And now those are kids are all grown as parents and have their own kids. And I know a couple of them still do that with their children. So interesting about donating to people who are less fortunate. Now let's talk about for a minute, what is an Advent calendar? You know, it's usually a calendar that counts down the days before Christmas. It can come in a variety of different shapes and forms and, and different things that, you, that we'd see. Its purpose is to visually, with your eyes, track the days until Christmas by opening a new piece or compartment each day on that calendar. The format typically features a series of doors, drawers, dials, pockets, and other movable parts that are numbered 1 to 24. So on December 1st, which is today, you'd open the first door. December 2nd, tomorrow, you open up the next door. The contents can uh, contain a variety of things. In some uh, cultures, they actually have treats, such as chocolate, cheese, coffee, maybe candles, little puzzles, little trinkets that they put in those windows. And when they open them, then you have that for that day. The origin, or the... Uh, the uh, Advent calendar first came about was first used by the, Jew, the German Lutherans back in the 19th and 20th centuries. And the popularity of them became, became very, very popular, particularly after Dwight Eisenhower, was, President Eisenhower, was photographed opening one uh, with his grandchildren back in 1953. And that, that seemed to set it off here in this country, how uh, many, many, many people then went out and got Advent calendars and did it with their, with their kids and their grandchildren. Again, when do we start it? This year, the start would be December 1st. And others start on the first uh, Sunday of Advent, which is usually between November 27th and December 3rd, somewhere in there. Because we said before, it's always the first Sunday uh, before, the closest Sunday to November 30th. Now, let's look at some of the events that happened leading up to the birth of Jesus that Advent kind of includes. Number one, we see from the Bible that uh, there was a census, a decree from Caesar, Augustus, that required everyone to be taxed, and which led Mary and Joseph to travel to Bethlehem. And uh, we'll talk about that in the, in the weeks to come before Christmas. Uh, we also see that an angel appeared to Joseph while Joseph, Joseph was considering divorcing Mary after discovering she was pregnant through the Holy Spirit. An angel told him, take her as his wife and to name the child Jesus. We'll look at that in more detail in the weeks to come. Also, during this time leading up to the birth of Jesus, during this Advent season, we see the birth of John the Baptist. Zechariah and Elizabeth foretold the birth of John the Baptist. And we see that coming to pass. We see Mary going on and visiting Elizabeth during her pregnancy and before uh, the birth of Jesus and John the Baptist. And we see Mary, uh, you know, did visit Elizabeth in Judea. We see that happening. Some other events in, that uh, leading up to Jesus' birth include the angel Gabriel appears to Mary in Nazareth and Galilee. And we see Mary actually singing a song out of all that and some declarations she makes. So it's very interesting, all these events that are going to take place before the birth of Jesus. Now, a simple explanation of uh, Advent, if we turn the Bible in Isaiah 9, 6, captures really the essence of the Advent season when it says this, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now let's look at that for a moment. It's declaring, Isaiah's declaring this basically hundreds of years before it actually happens. Some believe it's like 800 years before this actually, before the birth of Jesus actually happened. He's prophesying the birth of Christ. He's talking about, for unto us a child is born. So Isaiah saw and knew prophetically that a baby was going to be born. And he says, to us a son is given. A son is given. It's going to be a boy, not a girl, but a boy, a male. 
and it says Isaiah said goes on says and the government will be on his shoulders meaning the kingdom of God is bringing the government of heaven to the earth through this baby this baby boy next Isaiah prophesied that some of the names he'd be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace and there are many other things but that's what Isaiah wrote down and it was written now, this is hundreds of years, like I said, before the birth of Jesus. He shared this perfect promise from God that a Savior would one day be coming to our earth to bring light to a darkened world, to bring light to us. So ever since then, the people of God have both looked forward to and looked back at this moment in history when Isaiah has prophesied this. And this is a tremendous prophecy that, as we know, was totally fulfilled and accurate. Now, understanding all this, Let's look for a moment at the four weeks of Advent. Because there's four Sundays before the birth of Jesus. Let's look at these kind of uh, a little closer. Advent is broken up, like we said, in four separate weeks with their own specific theme. The theme you see in these weeks is hope, joy, love, and peace. Traditionally, each Sunday during Advent, you light one candle on an Advent wreath. If people, some people have reason, and there's five candles, and, they, and so for week one, you light the first candle. And that signifies that we're one week, one week closer to the arrival of our Savior. And you'll see this practice in many churches even. Uh, during the month of December, there's churches that will, will light Advent candles as well. Now, we don't own our own facility right now, so we're not able to do that and keep them lit during the, year, during the week. And the week's up to it, but many churches do that. And here's what each week in candle symbolizes. The first week, which is starting now for us on December 1st, that week symbolizes hope. The first week of Advent centers on hope, and it's symbolized by the lighting of that first candle. This is called the prophet's candle. It represents the hope of God's people as they waited throughout history for the arrival of a Savior that God had promised. So we've seen, and we see from the Bible, that God had promised the Savior would come to the earth. And this first week in Advent signifies that hope, that God's people have been told that a Savior is coming, and this is the hope. This is the subject matter of this first week, just like God had promised. The second week is the theme is marked by the theme of joy. that's celebrated with the lighting of what's called the shepherd's candle. The first people invited into the joy of Jesus' birth were actually shepherds out in the field that first Christmas morning. Remember the shepherds out in the fields? And they had a supernatural encounter with God. Well, the first people to be invited into that joy were actually those shepherds on that first Christmas morning. And typically, typically this, this candle is colored pink to represent joy. It's kind of interesting you look at that. Week three, we see, is the week of love. The third week of Advent represents love. This week focuses on that third candle. It's called the Bethlehem's candle, it, when it's lit. And it signifies God sending his only son to earth as a baby, where he's born in a humble stable found in a small town of Bethlehem. And it's the greatest definition of the word love. It's a sacrificial love that God was bringing to the earth himself through his son, Jesus, to be born through a woman here on the earth, impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and that this candle, this Bethlehem candle is lit because this baby, in that humble beginning, just in that stable, in that small town of Bethlehem, is really the greatest uh, picture that God could give us of sacrificial love, him sacrificing his son for all of us here on the earth. And many of us who were yet not even born yet. He saw all of us. The fourth and final week of Advent is it represents peace. And this emphasizes peace and culminating in the lighting of what's called the angel's candle. It was the angels that announced that Jesus was coming to the earth. It was the angels that said and called him the Prince of Peace. That he was entering the world in order to reconcile and bring peace between God and man. And that's why it's called the week of peace. Thank God that God's a God of peace. We're thankful for that. I'm thankful, thankful for that every single day. So many people today in our country are in torment. 
things aren't going well for them. They don't know where to turn or what to do. And one of the things we can do as Christians is to share the gospel with them that God is the God of peace, to bring them peace. I said, and a lot of people say this, well, the world's so messed up. And if God's in control, he's not doing a very good job. Now, you've heard me say this when we were back, you know, months ago talking about the end times. God's not in control in the earth right now. He has a plan. That plan, he works that plan through the church, the body of Christ. He has has empowered the body of Christ to be in control of the earth. We are to rule and reign here, control what goes on in the earth, spiritually speaking. And we've not done a good job of that. That's why the world's in in some places is such bad shape, even our nation at times, because we as Christians haven't stood up and declared the gospel like we should. And so our job during this Advent season is to make sure we're bringing these four items to the people of the earth who don't have what we have. There's a lot of people that don't have the hope that we have today. They, in fact, they would tell you that the country is hopeless. And, uh, I mean, just think about how people have lost their minds on some things. People declaring before our last pres- presidential election that if a certain person got elected, they would be leaving the country. Why would you leave your house and home and family in the country based on an election? That's how warped some people's thinking is. And those people don't have any hope. They have no hope at all. They don't know Jesus. If they did, they would be saying things like that or doing things like that. So we can bring hope to a world that has no hope, to a nation at times that has the people that have no hope. We can bring hope to them. We can also bring joy to them. We know the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy brings strength to us. But if you're not a Christian, you don't know that. In this day and time, there's not a lot of joy in people's lives because they don't know Jesus like we do. Love. Man, it's obvious that there's a whole section of people that don't love anybody but themselves. And they need the love of God. God, Jesus died for them as much as he died for you and me. So we need to be able to share about the love of God. It's in Christ Jesus with a very unloving world, a lot of unloving people, believe me. And we, who else is going to share the, uh, the peace of God with people who have no peace? Unbelievers aren't going to share that with each other. They don't know it like we know it. We know there's a peace beyond all understanding, the Bible tells us. And so we're thankful for that peace. And we're glad we can operate in that peace every day. And if you're not operating as a Christian in the peace of God, you need to. And if you're not doing that, that tells me you're not in faith. You're not obeying the Word of God. When things try to get unraveled, remember, it's not a spiritual, it is a spiritual battle. It's not a fleshly battle. We're not fighting against men and women, boys and girls. We're fighting spiritually in the place of the heavens where darkness is, where there's oppression, spiritual wickedness, the Bible tells us. And that's where our fight is. Our fight's in the spirit realm, not the natural realm. We're not fighting with people. We love people. We bring peace and hope and joy to people. We're not against people. We're for people. And we need to make sure we convey that to the unbelievers so they can... Look at us and say, well, that's what, that's what a true Christian looks like. They've got something that other people don't have. And they'll love me just the way I am. They're not asking me to change. They're just asking me to listen. And they're asking me, and showing me some things about a man named Jesus that I didn't know about. So we have to, that's our job here on the earth. That's what we should be in control of, is sharing Jesus with all these people. And give them the hope and the love and the joy and the peace that they don't have. And when we do that, then... It's going to be irresistible. I haven't seen anybody yet whose heart's been opened, who's been, whose heart's been peeled back from all the darkness and hardness on it, who once that heart is opened and identified as being open, that I've never seen anybody really reject Jesus with an open heart. I've seen reject Jesus with a closed heart, but not with an open heart. So we have to remember we are the light of the world, and Jesus came to produce that light. He came as the light. I am the light, the life. He talked about, uh, he said there's no one else that can go to heaven but through him. And we need to understand that that's what the people of our nation and the world needs right now. And uh, we need to bring that to people. And so understanding this, what's that mean for for you and me? Well, we got to first recognize that Advent is more than just a countdown to Christmas. It's more than that. If you lean into it and you embrace it, it becomes a very sacred journey. Different people, you know, do different things during Advent. 
I, I've noticed since I um, have moved to New Jersey, and I never really saw this in Oklahoma or Kansas. It, it may have ha it may have been there. I just never saw it. But I've seen so many people uh, in one particular denomination of the body of Christ that in New particularly around uh, New Jersey and, and in New York City, that during Advent season you'll see. Uh, they, they put ashes on the cross. You know about Ash Sunday later. I didn't even see that happening uh, here during Advent season. Many of them do that. They feel called to do that. And I've noticed that more and more uh, when we go into the city during Christmas. You'll see people, some people like that. And that's just their way of recognizing Advent. Uh, on, on top of Ash Sunday later, you know, on about the resurrection of Christ. But I think it's always interesting when you lean into it, look at it. Uh, this Advent season, it's a sacred journey. It's a journey that Jesus was coming and the people were getting ready for his coming. And then when he came, many of them weren't ready for it. They didn't believe it. There's still group of people today in the earth that don't believe Jesus has already come to the earth. And he's about ready to come a second time. And because he didn't come the way they thought he would come. They thought he'd come as a king. This great big spectacle would happen. And instead, he came as a baby in that little manger scene, completely off what they thought. And that's why today they don't think the Savior he has, has come to the earth. We know he has. And we help tell them that. Remember, Advent reminds our, us as followers of Jesus to embrace the hope, the joy, the love, and the peace in the midst of a very busy season. Me and Pastor Kim have noticed that uh, you know, it used to be you know September, was kind of start, the kickoff of the fall. You know, I mean, summer's till, you know, it was still officially on until September 21st, I believe. Then fall would kick in, and October was always the harvest month and getting you ready for Thanksgiving. So you'd see a lot of pumpkins and a lot of fall colors, and the colors start changing in the trees. And then you normally, I mean, years ago, you wouldn't see anything in November but Thanksgiving. You know, more pumpkins, pumpkin pie, and the Thanksgiving meal, the big feast, family together, friends together. And after Thanksgiving, then that kicked off, once that was over, the start of the Christmas season. Well, that's changed in our economic world. It seems like today, I mean, I think this year we actually saw Christmas stuff in September, if I remember right. And uh, it's just, it, it, why is that? People are trying to basically make more money off of it. Why is that? Because people give gifts at Christmas time. For the most part, people, people don't give gifts during Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You don't give them on Labor Day. You don't give them on July 4th, but you do on Christmas. Now, in our case, Pastor Kim, she's a great shopper. And she shops year-round for her kids and her grandkids. And that's why well, she's using a lot of wisdom when you have five children between us and we have eight grandkids. So when we're traveling, doing my own business, and as we run across these great deals for things for our grandkids and our children, our kids. And so we buy, buy those things, hang on to them. Uh, when we go to Oklahoma, you know, sometimes during the summertime, we'll, we'll, we'll give those gifts to the parents. They'll hide them and then present them to, for their birthdays, for Christmas. Uh, saves us a lot of shipping doing that. In fact, on this trip to Colorado, we've brought some Christmas for, presents with us uh, to give uh, to the parents to take home to Oklahoma so they can give to the kids later, as well as some of the other ones that live in Colorado. So there's wisdom in all that. But what I'm saying to you is that that's different. We're not out there promoting Christmas you know, during that time, but we are being wise stewards of, of what God's given us. But it's just been so commercialized, Christmas, that now it's creeping into September and October. It's almost to a point that sometimes Thanksgiving is kind of done away with. And uh, we all just experience Thanksgiving. And it's a wonderful time. And thank God for it. I think being thankful first helps, if you would, set the tone for the season of Christmas. And I think that's something we need to be considered about with other people. So we need to embrace as Christians that hope, the joy, the love, and peace in the midst of what becomes a very busy season. If you want to see something busy, I mean, just go to New York City and look at the Rockefeller Center and look at the tree. And it's up now, and it's going to be officially lit. I think it's December the 4th, I believe, this year, 3rd or 4th. Uh, and uh, there's thousands of people that come look at that tree. 
just to look at the tree and the lights and be and be just you know the decorations in the city. Uh, we we try to go you know every year once you know into the city during Christmas time to see all those decorations tree ourselves. But when we go, we're not alone. There's thousands of people, thousands, in that Rockefeller Center uh, to see that tree being lit and see that lit tree. So what I'm saying to you is very commercialized at times, but we have to be the ones that bring about the true meaning to people. We don't get caught up in all that. We can enjoy it with everybody else. Nothing wrong with that at all. But we need to understand it's, it's a season when some people's hearts are open to receive Jesus as Lord. There's people that are hurting. They don't have the peace, don't have the joy, the love. They, they don't have, uh, you know, the hope that tomorrow's going to be better because of Jesus, because they don't know him. So we've got to be willing to bring that to them. I want to challenge you to jump in both feet and join uh, Jesus in this journey during this season. Yeah, yes, he is in heaven, but his spirit's here on the earth. That's why he came, went to heaven to send his spirit, the Holy Spirit, back here to the earth. He's everywhere. He's any, everywhere and anywhere in the world today, the Holy Spirit is. So we need to be able and see what we can do to help bring the gospel to people who may be hurting in the world today, in our world here in Ringwood, New Jersey. There's people all around us that don't know what we know. And they're looking for answers. They're struggling. They're really, really struggling. And we've got the answer. The answer is his name is Jesus. And Jesus is the answer. Now, understanding this for a moment about the Advent season, let me also encourage you, this is a time to be strong in your faith. We know from Romans ten seventeen, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We talked about last week, uh, or two weeks ago, actually, that uh, now faith is faith is now it's not tomorrow it's now and so how do you operate in, in god's faith that brought jesus to the earth to get, bring a, a baby born to be birthed into this earth how that happened the faith of god god spoke it and it happened and when you're standing in faith you've got to speak things that you believe according to the word of god that are more important than what you're seeing in the world and when you do that, you put yourself in a position to receive from God whatever you need. Whether it's relationship restored, money, healing, deliverance, restoration, whatever it is you need. I think during the Advent season is a great time to receive exactly from God what it is you're believing God for and what you need. I wholeheartedly believe that. You know, I want to say this about faith here for a moment. Because faith is not just hoping. Faith has action behind it. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. That means faith with works is alive. So our faith should be alive as we show outwardly what our faith is believing God for by our actions, by how we conduct ourselves, what we speak. Uh, you cannot be in faith and fear at the same time. They don't, they don't coexist. You're either in faith or you're in fear. And if something's overwhelming you, do what the Bible says to do. Cast all that care upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Go to Psalm 37 and read the first 11 verses. And you'll see from the word of God about how to trust God, how to commit yourself to God, how to delight in the Lord. And then when you do all these things, that your life will get better. But you have to believe that. You have to believe that. If he's in church with us last Sunday, we showed the, the, the song uh, from the CMA Awards where Brooke and Dunn and Jelly Roll sang a song called Believe. And literally, when we got done showing it, people in our congregation, you guys were clapping. Pastor Kim was crying. I had tears in my eyes. Many other people did too. Because when you listen to the lyrics of that song, it's touching. Particularly when you know behind what's, uh, the, you know, the uh, testimony of Jelly Roll and how God's using him today on the earth. And Brooks and Dunn, Brooks and Dunn are, are uh, such great, strong Christians in their own right. And to see that all that come together, it was very, very, very anointed by God. And too many times we got people as Christians trying to receive from God, trying to chase their healing, tra you know, trying to chase their resources they need, trying to chase things. You don't chase things with God. 
You believe, and then you receive. You believe, then you receive. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. Man, she spent all the money she had. She was broke. Went to every doctor she needed to go to. Got They couldn't help her. She didn't get any better. She got worse, the Bible says. Then she heard about Jesus and him performing the miracles and the healings that were happening. And she said, if I can just get close enough, uh, close enough to him to touch his clothes, I will be healed. She didn't have to have a sermon from him, a message. She didn't have to sit down and talk to him. She said, I just touch his clothes. And the Bible says she touched his clothes and was made whole. See, when you believe God for something during this Advent season, you're believing God. The key word there is believe. And when you believe, all you got to do is reach out and touch what the Word of God tells you to touch, shows you to touch, and you'll receive immediately what you need from God. It'll come. Because that's God's response to faith. God must always respond to a person who's in faith, believing Him, believing His Word, believing the words by His Spirit. Remember we talked about being led by the Spirit of God? One of the reasons we're led by God's Spirit is so that we can live a victorious life in Christ. And then when there is a need for a miracle, you're so used to living a supernatural life with Jesus that it's not a big deal to believe in something that may be difficult for other people. And you're used to believing God and watching God come through for you. Why? Because you believe it. You're not trying to figure it out in your head. You're not trying to fix it. You're not trying to fix yourself. You're literally believing what Jesus said and receiving what he said you came to receive by honoring his word. And that's what a problem we have people with today not receiving from God because they won't spend, spend time in the word, in the realm of the spirit, and hear back from him. If he's going to direct your paths, and the Bible says he goes before you to prepare the way for you, and he does that, then you need to be able to hear his voice and follow him, and he will give you instruction. And when he gives you instruction, all you've got to do is obey the instruction. And when you obey the instruction, you'll get the result of that instruction, which is what you're believing God for. That's what faith is. But if you're sitting there trying to figure it out, if you're not sleeping well at night, because you can't determine what's going to happen, and you see everything around you crumbling, you're not in faith. You're in doubt and unbelief. And basically, you're operating by fear. You're letting the fear of the devil tell you what you won't have. Snap yourself out of that. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. Your part is to resist him. And when you do that, the power of God will come on you and he'll leave you. The devil will leave you. He'll flee. And every time I preach on that, i got people telling me, well, what if he doesn't? He has to. There's no plan B. There's no what if. If you resist him with the authority of God, using the name of Jesus, he will leave. He cannot stay. But you don't know. I don't care what I don't know. The Bible is more true than what I don't know. So we got to quit making excuses for why we're not receiving from God. Quit making excuses why the devil's not leaving. And do what the Bible says do. Resist him and he will flee. And then whatever area you need God's help in, you find scriptures on that, and you start declaring that over your life. And, you, and the devil will try to come and, and steal that word that's, that's been put in your heart. Don't let him do it. I know as a pastor, and I'm done preaching this, and we're finished, the devil will try to come steal the word. Don't let him have it. When he comes, tell him he's, your door's not open to him. Shut the door in his face and say, no, I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus. And he has to leave. There's no choice. And don't get into an argument with him, into a discussion with him. Tell him to go. Cast him out of your presence. And you keep doing that and every, and whenever he comes around. So during this Advent season, I'm seeing this for us as a church as a season of victory. Everybody say victory. I'm expecting you to have victories in your finances, in your relationships, in your health, both physical and mental and spiritual. Uh, and your job, your transportation, your housing, your food, that in every area of your life that during this Advent season, you're going to have miracles happening. 
seeing your needs met, your desires fulfilled. That's what we're believing God for for you during this Advent season. Every week's a week closer to the return of Jesus as far as celebrating his birth. Every week is a week closer to his return as well, because he is coming back to the earth again. But we're sitting right now on the birth of Jesus. This is a great time to, like I said, tell people about him. Tell them about the birth. Tell them what you know about it. And once you do, ask them if they've ever received Jesus in their heart and would they like to have somebody uh, as a Lord and Savior who loves them, who will give them the joy, the peace, the happiness, the fulfillment they need that they don't experience right now, that only He can give them. You won't find it in any other thing but Him. So let's declare this Advent season for us as a church and for your life. This is a season of victory, a season of miracles we've started today, a season of signs and wonders, a season of supernatural involvement with God that will completely, completely change the lives of other people, including our own lives. As we do this, position yourself for the miracle. Position yourself according to God's word to receive every God, everything God has for you during this Advent season. I'm praying that God will give you the revelation you need, his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding of what you need to do, that you clearly hear, hear his voice and don't follow the voice of strangers that you're following the good shepherd, that he's good all the time. He never wakes up grouchy or, cr or cranky. He's good all the time. And you, can all, you can always count on him all the time, that his spirit is leading you, that his word's directing you, that he's the director, that he's the boss, that he's in charge, that you're fully committed to him, not making him a convenient second stop on your Sunday, but putting him first every single Sunday of your life that you declare Jesus as your Lord and you come and worship him like you like we are today together. And then in doing that, then you are in a position to receive the very things God has for you, the things that you desire, the things he wants you to have to be fulfilled. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is the Son of God. He came to the earth once. He's going to come again. So let's take this time during this season to believe God for the supernatural. And not only for your lives and our lives, also believe for people that we don't even know. Believe for people in our community that have never come to our church. Believe for people in our community who may, may have never set foot in our church, but we can have, ask God to bring them across our path so we can share the good news with them. That Jesus loves them. That Jesus broke the barrier of sin to reunite them with God. And that he loves them to a point that he died for them, was raised from the dead so they could be forgiven. So you be made clean again and white as snow in, the, in his righteousness. We need to be prayerfully considering this. This could be, should be a season of harvest during this Advent season where boys and girls and men and women are giving their lives to Jesus. I'm believing for a household salvation during this time where the whole family gets saved. And I'm praying that God will bring them to East Coast Church and other life-giving churches in our area where they can hear the word of God and respond to it and respond to God's word. So I'm asking you to join me with your faith. Join me in uh, this season of Advent and believe in God for miracles and signs and wonders. And uh, no matter how you celebrate Advent, what you've done in times past, maybe you haven't done anything, but now you're, maybe you want to get an Advent calendar. Maybe you want to get an, ad, an Advent wreath and, and do those candles. Whatever it is, just know that this next four weeks, we're going to honor God and believe for miracles for us and our families and, and those people around us that we don't even know. And as we do that, God's kingdom will grow, the devil's kingdom will shrink, and we'll see many, many people come to know Jesus as Lord. This little baby, we're about to celebrate his birth, that this little boy became a man and became our Lord and Savior, and still is today. And he's actually now preparing mansions for us to live in in heaven. I don't know about you, but that's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. So this is what Advent's all about. Many times, I think, the spiritual churches never talked about. So I wanted to give you a little bit of history behind it, some insight into it. Celebrate it, how you and your family deem to celebrate it. And uh, just know this, that we're looking forward to seeing you again next week. Me and Pastor Kim, can't wait to be with you. 
if in week two, three, and four leading up to the birth of Jesus, we're going to be talking about some of these events in the Bible that I mentioned today to you. We're going to look at the scriptures, pull them out, and look and learn some things about the, the, the leading up to the birth of Jesus. There's many things we can learn and apply in our lives today that would be very helpful to us. And then once we get to his birth, it's going to be, it's going to be I mean, it's just, it's just tremendous. Just a tremendous, probably, other than basically the ascension of Christ after he died, uh, this is one of, in fact, I think sometimes the most important aspect for Christianity, because without him being born, there is no being raised from the dead. So looking for some great things in the weeks ahead. I pray you have a great week, and me and Pastor Kim will see you next week. And remember this, Jesus is Lord. God bless you all. See you next week.